Azenka's diverticulum can pose problems during intubation at ERCP. Azenka's diverticulum or pharyngeal pouch is a herniation of the pharynx through an area of weakness known as Chelian's dehiscence in the posterior pharyngeal wall. This triangular area of weakness is bounded superiorly by the oblique fibres of the thyropharyngeus muscle and inferiorly by the transverse fibres of the cricopharyngeus muscle. Zenker's diverticulum is associated with dysphagia and regurgitation. It can make intubation difficult during endoscopy, particularly with a side-viewing duodenoscope. The tip of the scope can end up in the diverticulum and there is even a risk of perforation. In this video, I will demonstrate two methods for safe intubation with a duodenoscope in the presence of a Zenker's diverticulum. The first method is wire-guided intubation. We start with a gastroscope, which is a forward-viewing instrument and allows easier intubation in the presence of a Zenker's diverticulum. Once the gastroscope has been passed into the stomach, a stiff guide wire is placed and the gastroscope removed, leaving the wire in situ. The wire is then fed up the channel of a duodenoscope, uh, usually with the aid of a snare or catheter, and the duodenoscope is passed over the wire. The system can be made stiffer by also passing a sphincter tone over the wire. With gentle pressure and manipulation, it should be possible to negotiate the Zenker's diverticulum and get to the stomach. Let us now see a real-life example. The first patient is a 78-year-old comorbid lady with abdominal pain, vomiting and pyrexia. She had a raised white cell count and a raised CRP together with abnormal liver biochemistry. A CT scan and MRCP showed stones in an inflamed gallbladder and stones in the common bile duct. She was treated for cholangitis with antibiotics. At ERCP, there was failed intubation, thought to be due to the presence of a Zenker's diverticulum. Hence, a barium swallow was performed, and this confirmed a 4 cm Zenker's diverticulum. After this, a second ERCP was undertaken. Here we see the MRCP showing the common bile duct stones. And here we have the barium swallow performed after the failed first ERCP, clearly showing the large Zenker's diverticulum. We now see the second ERCP. Initially, we start with a forward viewing gastroscope and almost immediately end up in the Zenker's diverticulum. Withdrawing the scope reveals the entrance of the esophagus and with a little bit of manoeuvring we're able to enter the esophagus and pass the scope into the stomach. A 0.035 inch wall flex super stiff wire is passed through the scope into the stomach. The scope is now withdrawn, leaving the wire in situ. Other types of wire can be used, but the stiffer the wire, the better. As we reach the upper esophagus, the anatomy of the Zenker's diverticulum is clearly demonstrated, with the esophagus, septum and Zenker's diverticulum 
all seen in the same frame. The free end of the wire is now passed up the channel of the duodenoscope. This will require the aid of a small snare or catheter to help guide the wire up the channel and out through the bung. The duodenoscope is then gently advanced over the wire. It may be possible to get past the diverticulum with gentle pressure alone. In this example, we are having difficulties using this simple method. Sometimes we may need to gently torque the scope as well as applying forward pressure. However, this technique also fails to get us past the diverticulum. If these simple methods do not work, as is the case here, then a sphincter tome or other similar catheter can be passed through the channel over the wire to increase the stiffness of the system. After passing a sphincter tome over the wire, we are able to finally negotiate the Zenker's diverticulum and reach the stomach. We then pass the duodenoscope to the second part of the duodenum in the usual way and complete the ERCP. I shall speed up the remainder of the video in the interest of time. In this case, biliary cannulation was fairly straightforward. The cholangiogram revealed several stones in the common bile duct as expected. Hence, a biliary sphinctrotomy was performed. Next, a 9mm to 12mm balloon catheter was used to remove the stones from the common bile duct. After several sweeps of the balloon, all the stones were removed. The final occlusion cholangiogram demonstrates a clear bile duct. The second method of intubation with a duodenoscope in the presence of Zenker's diverticulum employs the use of an overtube. Again, a forward viewing gastroscope is used to negotiate the Zenker's diverticulum initially. This time, a short wide bore overtube is preloaded onto the gastroscope. Once the gastroscope is in the stomach, the overtube is advanced gently into the esophagus. The gastroscope is removed, leaving the overtube in situ. Finally, the duodenoscope is passed through the overtube 
which remains in place for the duration of the procedure. Again, let us have a look at a real-life example. An 89-year-old lady with atrial fibrillation and who is on rivaroxaban was referred three months ago with a possible abdominal mass. However, the CT scan only showed a dilated common bile duct with fill-in defects within it. Before further investigations could be performed, she was admitted to hospital with rigors, painless jaundice and weight loss. An MRCP confirmed two stones in the dilated common bile duct and hence an ERCP was undertaken with rivaroxaban paused 72 hours earlier. At ERCP, incubation was difficult and the Zenker's diverticulum was suspected. A Zenker's diverticulum was indeed confirmed with a forward viewing gastroscope. At this stage, it was decided to use a short, wide bore overtube to facilitate intubation with a duodenoscope. The 25 cm long overtube was preloaded onto the gastroscope. The entrance of the esophagus was located by withdrawing the scope slightly. The gastroscope was then negotiated past the Zenker's diverticulum into the esophagus and then the scope was passed into the stomach. Once the scope was in the stomach, the overtube was advanced into the esophagus. The gastroscope was then withdrawn. We now change over to a duodenoscope and pass the scope through the overtube. The rest of the procedure is performed with the overtube in situ. The duodenum is reached in the usual way. Again, I shall speed up the rest of the video in the interest of time. In this case, biliary cannulation proved difficult and it was necessary to perform an Erlangen pre-cut to facilitate cannulation. Eventually, biliary cannulation was achieved. The cholangiogram showed a very dilated bile duct containing at least two large stones. A sphincterotomy was performed and we decided to perform a sphincteroplasty before attempting extraction of the stones. A 15 mm balloon was advanced into the lower common bile duct and the balloon was inflated to 15 mm. The inflated balloon was held up for 30 seconds. After this, the balloon was deflated and withdrawn. Next, 
a 12 to 15 mm stone extraction balloon was used to clear the stones from the bile duct. Here we see the first of the two large stones emerging from the papilla. After several trawls of the bile duct, all the stones were removed. The final occlusion cholangiogram showed clear bile ducts. In summary, this video showed two techniques to intubate the esophagus with a duodenoscope in the presence of a Zenker's diverticulum. In both cases, the esophagus is initially intubated with a forward viewing gastroscope. The first method involved the use of a guide wire with a stiffening catheter. The second method employed the use of a short overtube. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.